Hey, it's Heather at Adventures in Gardening, and today is going to be part one of two of a series that I'm going to do comparing zucchini rampicante to seminole pumpkin. Now, first, a little backstory. I did a video two years ago on zucchini rampicante, and it got a lot of views. I, a lot of people were interested in zucchini rampicante, and since then, I I have seen it over and over again on uh, Facebook pages and all over social media. People want to grow zucchini rampicante because it is very productive and also because it seems to be more resistant to a lot of the critters that want to eat all of our squash, right? So a little backstory on the zucchini rampicante first before we talk about today's video. I've been growing zucchini rampicante for about six, maybe seven years, and I'm going to tell you exactly how I grow it. First of all, I delay my planting. I do not plant. I'm in Connecticut zone six, by the way. Our last frost in the spring is usually early May. Our first frost in the fall is October 1st-ish. It just varies. Um, but I delay planting because this is a hugel culture hill. I grow um, the zucchini rampicante, I started doing it as an afterthought just to take up this space. Now this hill, I, um, this is a very, very, very steep hill initially. And when we did our clearing, we would lay the logs here. So I laid the logs, I laid the sticks, I laid the leaves. And then I kept, every year I will just pile more organic debris on top of it. It is essentially my big thriving compost pile. And um, so every year it's growing and I need it in the springtime to be able to dump things on it. So I do not plant this until much later, the zucchini ramp conte. And this year, it was not until after the 4th of July that I planted either plants here. All right, so delayed planting. Secondly, it is getting some water or some moisture because of, this is a who culture hill. The organic debris is going to uh, stay more moist or hold more water when it gets rain. And I've heard from a lot of people who want to grow the rampicante on a trellis. I'm sure that you can do that. It doesn't work for me um, because of all the critters that want to kill the zucchini. This grows very, very fast and it's constantly rooting in on the vine. So it's producing or uh, making all these new substations of um, in case the main part of the plant is killed out by squash vine borer it's going to still continue to live because it's got new roots somewhere else. All along this has got new roots. Now the usual suspects uh, are, are, are here. We, we've had um, squash vine borer in the gardens. We've had striped cucumber beetles. We've had Mexican bean beetles. We've had squash bugs. And they are all here except the squash vine borer. It's too late for that one. Um, they are in here, but this plant still continues to grow and to produce. So there is some resiliency on top of all those other things. Now this is my opinion. This is from observing this plant year after year. So in my video two years ago, I showed this massive harvest that I got from just a couple of plants. And from the year prior, I had one that was like 40 some inches long that I had stored that was still perfectly edible. This is a great food production plant, right? So this past spring, I had a customer come to my plant stand um, who specifically ordered zucchini rampicante seedling online and came to pick it up. And she said, oh, have you heard of Seminole pumpkin? It acts a lot like zucchini rampicante. So she had heard. Now she left the driveway and I ordered these right away. So this was sometime in June and I ordered these seeds and I got a plant started for myself. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. I want to see if the flavor uh, is as sweet as it is reported to, to be because zucchini rampicante is not sweet. I mean, it'll just be fun. Is it as resistant to critters as rampicante? So far, yes, it is. Did it also get delayed? Yes, it did because I need this hill to be able to dump my organic matter on from cutting everything back and weeding all the gardens for as long as possible. And right now they are taking off like mad. Now this is, this is part one, I'm showing you 
right now because they're actively growing and producing fruit and I'm going to bring you back after the first frost and we're going to look and see how many fruits there are, how they did, and then we're going to taste the Seminole pumpkin. But right now let's turn the camera around and I'll show you what they look like. All right, so here we are. Zucchini rampicante is planted somewhere over in here and the Seminole pumpkin is planted somewhere over in here. The foliage looks very similar. Um, what will happen now is this vine is growing backward over into the brush and wooded area and I am not going down there because do you know how many ticks are down there? All the ticks, all the ticks are down there. <laughs> so after the first frost hits these plants, I will suit up appropriately and I will go collect all of my fruits. But there are plenty up here to see. So the first to produce a fruit was Zucchini Rampicante, which I'm thankful for because I do need seed for next year. So this particular fruit that is already turning orange is my um, fruit for the seed. But there are a lot of young fruits. You can see them in the back and now you can see my Seminole pumpkin. They're, so they're growing together. I'm not going to stop them. I'm not going to try to redirect them. I'm just going to let them do this. So it is uh, uh, supposed to be a sweet uh, pumpkin much like a butternut squash is my is what I've read. So here's another Seminole pumpkin here. So the only time that I redirect this plant is to keep this path open. So I will just take a growing tip like this and maybe put a stake in the ground and push it that way. So I am certain that there are a ton of Rampicante on the other side of this hill, but we will save that for the final video here because I'm not going down there right now. And I'm hoping there will be just as many Seminole pumpkins. So that's how things are going so far, very smoothly. This plant, both plants grow very, very fast. Delayed planting is um, a tool that I use not just here. I use it for cucumbers. I use it for other zucchini and crookneck squash. I know we all have that mentality of the, of, you know, our great grandparents where we got to get our garden in at a certain time and then it's done at a certain time. Garden throughout the season as much and as long as you can. So do I water these? Yes, I still do water these. If we don't get rain for a couple of days, I think this plant really is a water hog and it needs extra watering and it will wilt. Both of them have wilted um, if it's been a couple days since they've had rain. The great news is I will spot water only where, the, um, where I think the initial plant is planted. So subscribe if you haven't already so that you can get the next update, the final update on Zucchini Rampicante versus the Seminole Pumpkin. Thumbs up if you enjoyed spending time with me and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next adventure in gardening. See you soon.